assembly and maintenance. So you already know how to and have assembled this portion of the horn. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and assemble that as you've already done uh, for these weeks and just set that aside for right now in a safe place. Now, whenever you assemble your instrument, you always do it with the case on the floor. So please make sure the case is on the floor and that the latches, when you open, you know, come up in the appropriate manner, that if there's a logo on the case that says Yamaha or Selmer or something, that it's right side up, okay? You open that up, and then you'll find a neck strap in the little pouch. I want you to pull that out. The hook always goes on where it opens up to the right side. So put that around your neck, and then you can adjust it accordingly by grabbing on that and pulling up to tighten it or to pull it down to loosen it. Okay, now you already know, again, the neck, mouthpiece, ligature reed. Those are important elements of the horn, but we also have a body of the horn, and that's where the majority of the instrument is. Now, this is the body of the horn, okay? There is a neck stopper on it that's plastic. Take that out of the top. The reason for that is that when you look at it, it's nice and circular. The neck stopper keeps it from being bent, okay? So when you, when you handle the saxophone body, you can grab it by the bell area here. And you'll notice that I'm putting up on your screen an image of the saxophone with the names of the parts, okay? This is the body, these are keys, okay? There are a bunch of keys on the saxophone. <clears throat> Excuse me, so be careful with that. The way you hold it is by not grabbing any of the rods or the keys. If you look on the back side of the instrument, it has a little hoop here, a little circle. This is where the neck strap hook goes in, okay? So you do that and you can adjust the neck strap height accordingly, all right? Now, the other portion of this is taking the already assembled neck mouthpiece ligature reed and putting it on inside of the top of the body, all right? Now, if you'll notice, that there is a screw at the top of here. You'll need to make sure that that's unscrewed. All right, and you'll put it in like so, and you can twist it. Now, if you look at the back of this, it needs to be lined up quite well, okay? That this little piece, which is called the octave key mechanism, needs to be able to open this key appropriately when activated and the alignment of it is, is important. So it should be nice and in line with the bell and so forth. Now, if the horn is like way over like that, it's obviously incorrect. Some students will actually put it in because it's circular, it'll fit any of these ways backwards like that. That is obviously not the way it goes. So be careful not to do that. Okay, and then another very important part of this puzzle here is that this spot is, uh, or the piece of this is metal, this polished brass, okay? The inside of the neck here, of the, the top of the body rather, is also metal. That means that cork grease does not go on that, okay? No sort of lubricant goes on this at all. Uh, you might need, like, uh, to clean it with just some, some like, brass, uh, brass finishing cloth, all right? But if there ever gets any lubricant on it, it will make it, um, you know, quite dirty. And in fact, it will attract dust and grime as opposed to help out with that. All right. So the assembly of the saxophone is to assemble the part that you already know how to do, which has the most sort of nuanced steps of it anyway. And then you pull out the body of the horn and then the neck strap. You put that together. You put the neck on top of the instrument slide it down and then screw the neck screw in until you get some resistance but no more you don't have to really bear down and make sure it's extremely tight just like the ligature only tighten it until you feel resistance and that's it that's all there is to it to saxophone assembly regarding maintenance for the saxophone what you have here is the saxophone already assembled. Imagine you've been play, uh, playing it and you're ready to put it away or your students are ready to put it away at the end of class. What happens at this point? Well, the first thing that I would encourage you to do is to either take the neck off like this and set it aside or 
you can leave the neck on and then gently twist the mouthpiece with the ligature and the reed on uh, or with the ligature and the reed as they were assembled and set it down safely and then you take the saxophone body with the neck attached and you take your swab here all right which is a silk swab that has a weighted end AC dangling right there what I like to do with this is to feed the weighted end of the swab into the bell of the horn like so and the weight will take it down to the U tube of the saxophone at this point I just feed it and gently shake it and it comes out this end and this is a silk swab that I'm pulling through which I really like for the saxophone and it will clean the entire body and of the saxophone but it will also pull out uh, the moisture from within the neck too. All right, so that's the main thing you've got to do as far as daily maintenance is to clean out all the moisture from within. Now, something I use a great deal on the saxophone is, is to keep from sticky pads. What we like to have is uh, at rest, some of the keys are open. As you can see, like these keys right here, one, two, three, and P, they're open, but the palm keys here at rest are closed, okay? And then there's some down here at the bottom, there's the low E-flat key here and the low C-sharp key here. Those are the ones that get sticky over time. So there are some tools out there and some products. This is uh, called Key Leaves, and it, this right here is a cool thing that when you take and you slide it here underneath the arm of the C-sharp key, all right, keeps that propped open, and then I put it, let's see if I can show you that, there's this post here by the E-flat key that keeps the E-flat key open there. And so when you just kind of let this air dry with the key leaves in place, it, it opens the key up and it lets it dry naturally so the moisture isn't on the pad when it's sitting closed. Now, uh, even if you clean out with the swab here, there's still gonna be some residual moisture in there. So things like the key leaves are really effective. They have uh, some, other, some other options for key leaves too for the palm keys. And the closer you are to this part of the horn, to the neck, the more moisture there's gonna be. So they have little key leaves for the palm keys, which are pretty cool and uh, they have them also for soprano saxophone and tenor saxophone and baritone saxophone. So that is a, a maintenance aspect, key leaves um, and the swab. Now, after you've done that, over time, you will notice just kind of dust and so forth kind of collecting on the saxophone. Just take a, a cloth and wipe it down. You know, this is a brass instrument and it's lacquered here and uh, a cloth is not gonna hurt that now you could take some key oil and oil all of the little joints uh, here where the posts and the rods meet you know once every six months or so and that will help keep the action really good because once you put a little oil up in one of these joints gravity will gradually take it down so just put a little drop of oil at each of those fittings like i say about once every six months should be fine also, every instrument should use an annual checkup, so use your local or regional repair technician uh, for those things. You know, there will be pads that need to be replaced, corks will need to be replaced, and so forth. Now, we've already discussed this in another video, but cork grease is essential to put on your cork. And if it's a new cork, you're going to have to do this every time you play, probably for a couple of weeks, until it works on or until it gets to the point where the mouthpiece can go on pretty smoothly okay then the cleaning and maintenance of the mouthpiece and the reeds so with your reeds you never want to store them in the case where they're assembled like this so oftentimes young students will just take this part off the horn and put it in their case shut the case and then come back to the next day of course it's going to smell and of course bacteria is going to grow if you don't take this off and clean it regularly meaning after every time 
So you could get a reed case, which you have with your little packet to take it off, wipe this off. This is a synthetic reed, which you also have for this class, uh, for your single reeds methods class, but if you're using cane reeds, you should just make sure to wipe those down. You could run water over them. You could also disinfect these with some disinfectant musical spray, or you could put a little mixture of hydrogen peroxide and water together and put the reed in, you know, for, you know, 30 seconds or so to disinfect that. Now, when you clean the mouthpiece, almost all of your mouthpieces are made out of hard rubber. So do not boil water and put this in because it'll melt and it'll misshape in this and it won't be useful. All right. Just um, also, if you drop this on a floor, it's fragile and brittle enough that it will break and not be used, uh, not be useful then either. So be careful when handling this. Now you can wash this and you should wash it every week with warm so or warm water with some soap and just a towel okay make sure you you dry it out you can even use you know your swab to kind of clean some of those things out too but if you're really particular about the the gross nature of this you might want to use a, a different um, you know cloth for this there's some different mouthpiece like pipe cleaner things that uh, that are available for per for purchase as well just be careful the ones that have kind of the 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 feathers and, and things like that that you know whenever you you push that in and kind of pull it out it, the little fibers from that will often get left in the mouthpiece so i don't like having that there it could ultimately either get in your mouth or get caught on the reed prevent it from vibrating fully so just make sure you clean out the inside of your instrument and your mouthpiece take care of your reeds daily and then make sure your instrument technician gets to look at this instrument each year replace pads that need to be replaced corks that need to be replaced oil the rods and the posts on the saxophones and and if you're really playing a lot uh, i recommend getting key leaves for your saxophone okay those are the basics of maintenance for the saxophone